What is up, everybody? Welcome into Victory Monday, episode 31 of the Brahma Bullpen is here. We got so much to talk about, so many things going on in the league. But first of all, before we get any farther, and while you guys are all still here, we got some receipts, baby. We're going to have to call out some of our fellow United Football Media Group people who are talking a bunch of smack to the Brahma Bullpen last week saying that the DC is the best team in the league and we got the best defense in the history of all football and our cornerbacks are really high draft picks. Um, something like that. So what we're going to do right now while you're here, let's roll the video footage just to see how wrong some of our United Football Media buddies were. You want my rebuttal now? You want to you wait till right now? DC is good. This is that's the only game that's a blow up. Whoa! So, uh, okay. Uh, that, All right. That, that's that's How about the only this? game, and I know I know we'll go to the breaking down game. By uh, game yeah, I, I was gonna say quickly. save the rest of this. We'll we'll yeah. leave it yeah. at blowout. My boy Ace took the Brahmas on the polar opposites as his upset pick. Credit to Ace for knowing what he was talking about. My boy Webb, he got it half right. He's half right, Webb. Because there, it was a blowout, but the Brahmas, well, we all know the Brahmas won, right? So it was a blowout on that side. What else did Webb have to say in this same episode of Polar Opposites? Roll it, producer. But here, you, well, you said... San Antonio. You picked San Antonio. I picked San Antonio to, to win. The best I, I picked San Antonio to win. Yeah, to beat the best defense in the league. You think Garbers, with that offense, which plays for San Antonio, is going to beat the best defense in the league? I think so. But I think... It's a six-point game, listen, man. Listen, you said, oh. Uh, what was that? What was that? Uh, you mean Garbers, the gentleman with two passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, and a 75% completion ratio against the quote unquote best defense in the league. Is that the garbage you're talking about, sir? Now you might be thinking there's no way Webb dug himself any deeper. But Webb's on multiple shows. But let's hear what he said on the DC show. Is that DC was very confident with their pass rush and you know Greg Williams loves to blitz and loves those edge guys. Mm -hmm. And San Antonio might have been a little desperate. So that that could tell us What was that? Uh Webb was claiming that because we picked up a defensive pass rusher, Mr. Tim Ward, that DC dropped, that our defense must be desperate. Uh, we had four sacks. Tim Ward got one of those. Seems like a smart move on our part. Let's see what else Webb had to say. I only got one name, Brad Wing, because he's just going to be punting all day long. So <laughs> it's fun. What was that, Mr. Webb? Oh, yes. Mr. Webb was implying that the only player that would be impactful for the Brahmas was going to be our punter, Mr. Brad Wing, because he was going to be punting the ball all day. That leads us to our very next topic. My favorite football play of all time. That's right, of all time. I've watched tens of thousands of football games, and our punter, who was going to do nothing but punt, along with our starting center, probably made the best football play, gimmick, fake field goal, luck, whatever you want to call it. I call it right place, right time. Uh, just an amazing play, and it probably had a little piece of everything I just said. Producer, roll the TikTok video. I had to make a TikTok video about this one. Takes the snap. He wants to throw. Brad Wing walks it downfield, and it's caught to the goal line. Touchdown! It's the center, Alex Malone. That's right, baby. The Brahma bullpen. Player of the game, Alex freaking Molet, starting center, checked in as a tight end for that play. He was the third option, 
with uh, the actual holder uh, destroying, uh, destroying being one of the options, the actual kicker there, excuse me, the field goal kicker being one of the options. And uh, the play got broken up. Like, he was double covered. There was nowhere to throw the ball. But uh, Alex Millett had the wherewithal to understand that he was a in as a tight end, and he was uncovered at the end of the line. So he just kind of floated out there to the middle of the field. And you saw what happened. There's tons of videos out there and interviews. Check out the UFL's YouTube channel. Check out uh, UFM's uh, X channels. Check it all out. Uh, you'll, you'll see all kinds of videos. There's little clips there. But uh, Alex Millett came right out and said, the only thing I was thinking was catch the ball. And then once he caught it, he said, oh, man, there's no one around me. I'm going to run for a touchdown. So uh, just an awesome, awesome trick play right there going into halftime uh, to take the win. So, you know, I think yeah, Webb Web was right, you know. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, our punter wasn't going to be involved in the game, but uh, looks like he was. Huh? I mean, I don't know. Anyways, awesome deal, awesome game. We're going to get into the stats a little bit later, get into some of the highlights. We're going to go ahead and uh, leave my boy Webb alone. And he did want me to He did want me to let everybody know on the YouTube world that uh, we had a little $20 bet, uh, winner take all, between me and Webb, first game of the season, got a little side action on there, and uh, Webb paid up immediately. So he's a, a gentleman and a scholar and a man of his word. And I did promise that after this episode I would I would stop harassing him uh, the last couple of weeks, we've had kind of a back and forth, making gifs and all that stuff, going back and forth. Uh, but the thing about it is uh, we're moving on to the boats with our harassment and trash talk here at the United Football Media Group. You know, down in the cow pasture, we don't hold grudges, and uh, we love a little bit of trash talk. So we had fun with, with my boy Webb all last week. Uh, I was uh, happy to see the Brahmas win 27-12, to 12, baby. Let's move on in this show so the other thing i'm going to pick on the united football media group about a little bit um we did a power rankings you're going to be seeing the graphics come out of these power rankings and we're going to just talk about the brahmas in dc because you know we don't want to talk about every team in the league here we don't got all night but we originally if you see the graphic had the brahmas ranked seven and dc was ranked number two behind the stallions so after week one went you know ended the way that it ended and we had only one XFL team win, and we had uh, the other three wins came on the USFL side. We did a revote, and now we got the Birmingham Stallions at number one, as they should be. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with them being at number one. They scored 27 points just like the Brahmas, and they dominated uh, an inferior team just like the Brahmas. Oh, dang. I promise that's my last shot at D.C. Uh, but now we got the Brahmas at number two, Memphis at number three, Michigan at four, St. Louis at five. I think St. Louis should be over Michigan, but that's just me. Uh, Arlington, D.C. at 7, and then Houston rounding up the bottom at 8. Even uh, Houston's game wasn't, uh, you know, without its controversy or without – it was a close game. I mean, it's not like they completely got obliterated. Uh, most of the games were close. All the games were competitive and uh, very entertaining over this weekend. Uh, but the new UFM Power Rankings has the Brahmas up from number 7 – oh, excuse me, up from number 6 – to number two in the league, so we jump four spots. And uh, we're going to just see where we go the rest of the year, right? So let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we're going to get into some of the stats from the game. This is our game review. We're going to do some stats and do some highlight videos. Uh, real quick, the Brahmas had a total 207 yards, while DC had 253 yards. The Brahmas did not give up a single touchdown in this game. Our defense was stellar. There was a couple called back from penalties that happened on both sides of the ball. So I don't want to hear everybody saying, well, we would have scored, but the uh, refs got involved in the game. That happened to the Brahmas as well. Uh, our defense was just better than uh, D.C.'s offense, right? Uh, we had 3.3 yards per rushing attempt. Uh, the D.C. defenders had 3.4 yards per rushing attempt, so very similar there. Uh, net rushing yards, though, we had 75 to their 44. Uh, a lot of that was... Uh, on the back of McFarland, who uh, was the most explosive running back in the league this over this past season, uh, leading the league in rushing at this point, uh, I believe. So way to go, McFarland. He kind of came from nowhere. We were kind of expected to see Lovett uh, on the field, and he was on the field for a few attempts, uh, short down uh, goal line type situations. So we can kind of see that the the role they're going there. We'll 
bust out some of the highlights that are in a little bit, and you'll see that uh, McFarland touchdown reception. Uh, passing yards, we had 195 to their 209. Uh, but here's the here's the separating factor. Ta'amu, uh, Offensive Player of the Year, MVP of the Year, whatever you want to call him from last year that no longer matters, 56% completion rating, 24 out of 45. Or our boy Garbers, who uh, wasn't going to be able to handle uh, D.C.'s defense, uh, 20 out of 27, had a 74% completion rating. I'll take that all day. Average yards per attempt for Garbers was 9.8. Average yards uh, per attempt for D.C., uh, 8.4. Uh, we had three passing touchdowns to D.C.'s zero passing touchdowns. I believe uh, our cornerbacks were viewed as a weakness. We did have a pick. That was returned for like 80 yards. You'll see highlights of that here later. Um, and they had zero passing touchdowns. So I think our secondary did just fine. Uh, we uh, averaged 5.3 yards per play. They averaged 4.1 yards per, per play. Uh, we went three for three on the uh, extra point conversion. We got one uh, one point conversion and one, or excuse me, two, two, two one point conversions and one two point co conversion. So we scored our conversion after every touchdown which is a great stat that's going to separate uh, winning teams from losing teams eventually. Uh, that red zone offense is critical, right? Um, our uh, red zone attempts, we went two for two. DC went 0 for three. So our red zone offense was perfect. DC's red zone offense was garbage, 0 for three. Uh, third downs is our biggest need of improvement. We went one for eight, which is not good. We still won the game, but that's because our fourth down conversion uh, rate was three out of four. So I don't know if we're going forward on fourth down because they're trying to protect destroying. I personally don't think that's what the problem. I don't think that's the issue. Uh, I think that it was all situational where we were in that, you know, no man's land, super long kick, uh, make it work to going forward. I think uh, the Brahmins came out, as you could tell by watching the game, with the intent to be aggressive. And so they, uh, you know, they they were going to go for it on fourth down uh, every chance they got. Um, DC did go for it once on fourth down, uh, 0 for 1, did not convert. So, uh, And then penalties, they had 9 for 66 yards. We had 7 for 70 yards, so just a four-yard difference there. Uh, they had a fumble uh, that they were able to recover. We had a fumble that we lost. That was that uh, Jaronte Kirkland uh, made a sweet catch kind of there at the seam. And uh, took a big hit. The ball came out, but he more than made up for it with uh, his pass, his receiving stats for the game, and the touchdown run that he got. So, John Trey, don't even worry about that, man. We got you back. Love what you did. Um, we scored eight points off of their turnovers, and uh, time of possession actually favored DC thirty-two minutes and thirty seconds to our twenty-seven minutes and thirty seconds. With that, let's see some highlights. Enough of me talking, producer. Let's go ahead and pop up the first highlight and react to that. With DC, pressure on Garber's got it out from a good arm angle. McFarland hits the Jets, makes a move, dives and scores. See that? You see that? The not only DC got some pressure on us, but not enough, obviously. Uh, but Garbers was able to stay mobile in the pocket, pocket swing back, sidearm it, basically around or under the defender, depending on what your, your angle was for the stadium. Got it to McFarland, and now you see why he's our RB1. He's got the field awareness, the speed, and the hands. We talked about all our running backs basically being scat backs. They need to be able to receive the ball. Case in point, touchdown, baby. First touchdown of the season, uh, pass of the running back. Couldn't have been planned any better. Next highlight producer. And now on third down, Williams again out of the backfield, and he can't break free. You see, now there was DC's uh, attempt to run a Brahmas-type offense. Our defense closed on that. Our cornerback got to the tackle, and the safety was right there to back him up. That's the difference between a game-winning defensive play and a touchdown uh, on the other side. So great job by our defense. Next clip, producer. Second out and goal. Motion again. It's a flip. It's Kirkland. It's a touchdown. And the Brahma's offense is humming. See that little run by Kirkland right there? 
one of the things that AJ Smith does in his office, and it was on the TV broadcast, they broke it down a little bit. So all the fans got uh, unprecedented access and thought process to these play designs and, and what they expect to see when they called them. But they sent the wide receiver in motion, and that whole play was uh, ran, or the consequences of that motion was going to be based upon what the linebacker did. If the linebacker had stayed in the middle, Garbers was going to pull that ball instead of giving it to Kirkland on the sweep and try to get that pass off. But because the linebacker went with the wide receiver in motion, uh, it was the the run option, the RPO, whatever you want to call it, the run option to Kirkland on the swing because that was cleared out for him to make it. What a great play. What a great play design. It's one of the reasons we were so effective in the red zone uh, the other uh, Sunday when we beat D.C. Let's roll the next clip, producer. Jordan Ta'amu. Time to throw for QT. And a touchdown. After the play, flagrant personal foul. Number 59 of the offense. He's ejected. The flagrant foul will be enforced on the try. So a lot to unpack here. Gene DeLance, after the touchdown, spitting on an opposing player. Brian Banks, the referee, and this crew decided to stick with it. After review, there was a false start by number 59 of the offense. There will be a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. We also had the personal foul that was flagrant by number 59. Both of those fouls will be enforced. The flagrant foul is 15 yards from the succeeding spot. It's still second down. It's a six to nine point swing. Brilliant. Second and goal from the 28. Balls out. Ta'amu got it back and got it complete to the sideline. To the world. Looked like Francois had some issues with his headset comms. Pocket collapses. Francois escapes and he wiggles forward. We've got a starting quarterback back in. And on third and goal, Ta'amu to the sideline. He has picked. Darius Phillips off to the races. Inside the 30. Harmon trying to run him down. Phillips to the five. I know that was quite a long clip, but all that happened back to back to back. So DC's driving. They get down in the end zone. Their offensive lineman, number 59, does two things stupid. One, he gets a false start that's not called by the refs. We'll cover that in a minute. But then he gets into it with Delonte Scott. Delonte Scott was in his grill all day. He owned 59 all day. Guy stood no chance. Well, at some point, he spits in Delonte Scott's face. You can hear Delonte Scott on the television broadcast. I was at the game, so I had to watch this later, but you can hear him on the broadcast. Basically, tell Tom, your boy does it one more time, it's over. Like, I don't know what that means, if, if there was going to be a squad out in the field or whatever. But Delonte Scott was obviously grossed out because of the dude spitting on him. And to the ref's credit, did what they had to do, called that flagrant personal. Then, while all that was working its way out and these fights were almost breaking out in the field, our offensive uh, line coach, Gerard, saw through the replay or somebody saw from the Brahms organization and got to Gerard and told him, hey, man, this dude false started also. So you could see him doing his work on Wade Phillips on the sideline, convincing him to throw that flag. Uh, he didn't throw it right away because uh, Wade Phillips wanted to save those flags in, in case they were losing or in case it was an absolutely needed situation. But through the flag and the false start was confirmed by Dean Bandito. So not only did they get the 15 yard penalty that got uh that that uh Got pulled the touchdown off of the board, right? That touchdown did not count. That's why the Brahmas did not give up a single touchdown. But they also got the personal foul, moved them back 15 yards, and 59 got kicked out of the game. Couldn't have gone any worse for DC, right? Wrong. Uh, next thing you know, very next play, Tom was getting pressure. Brahmas backfield, sack him. He gets hit hard, misses a couple of plays. Uh, got us one of our four sacks, tied for first in the league with four sacks in game one. Uh, and while we're talking about that, we'll get into defensive stats later, but Jordan Williams, Delonte Scott, Tim Ward, Devontae Beckett, and our secondary for the lights out, man. Kavion Patton was in the backfield all day. 
I digress. We'll get to that in a little bit. But so big momentum swift, and then we get the pick and the 80, 90 yard return almost got all the way to the end zone. Uh boy just ran out a little ran out a little gas right there, uh, getting closer to the end zone. But hey, a couple of plays later, we'll get the touchdown. Roll the clip. And open. Now leading and looking for more. Chase Garbers. And they have it. There's the wheels. There's the PJ Walker reference by Coach AJ Smith. Uh, good arm talent, decent wheels. I wouldn't. I think when we when we previewed Chase Carver's a few episodes back, you know, we have the single threat quarterback, pocket passer, dual threat uh, quarterback, the ones that like to run in pass. I called Garber's like a threat and a half. Not not to be disrespectful, but he can run when he needs to run. He can stay alive when he needs to stay alive. That was a called uh, quarterback. Uh, draw so he grabbed that ball set back everybody went on coverage people moved the right way boom touchdown and uh, he didn't avoid the contact either man what a great game what a great day Brahma's win 27-12 Alex Millett player of the game here in the bullpen we're going to do player of the game every week uh, see who we like we'll make a little graphic and pop it up right here uh, producer pop up the Alex Millett graphic player of the game Alex freaking Millett i I dare you to find me another podcast that did the right thing and chose an offensive lineman as player of the game when something crazy and historic happened like it did this past Sunday. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome performance by our offense. Uh, let's go over some of our defense stats. We kind of talked offense a little bit before all the clips. Um, our defense gave up zero touchdown. You saw the sacks that we had, the pressures. We were in the backfield all day. We had 64 total tackles. Uh, we had four tackles for a loss. They cost them 28 yards. Uh, now, D.C.'s defense is supposedly and probably is one of the best three or four defenses in the league. Uh, I wouldn't go on the limb and say they're the best. I think the team we play next week, next week, Memphis, has got a pretty stout defense. I think Birmingham's got a pretty stout defense. And I think the Brahma's got a case to be one of the top two or three defenses in the league. And I think more people can appreciate that now after watching game one. But uh, they had 58 tackles, five tackles for a loss, cost us 11 yards. Uh, one of the thing is, as you look at pass breakups on this graphic right here, our secondary was supposed to be the weak spot, right? We knew our front seven was going to be lit. We knew our linebackers was were going to just be off the chain with Williams and Tavante Beckett. Uh, Ray was a pleasant surprise. He was uh, seemed like he was in the backfield hustling around all over the place. Nelson, number 91 on the defensive line, looked like he was running 100 miles an hour every time I saw him. And, of course, KV on Patton was just disruptive all day in the backfield. Uh, we had 20 yards, 26 yards on the sack, uh, and then we had the 88-yard INT return. So you can see our defense was better than D.C.'s defense. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, PFN PFF.com, I don't know why I always say PFN. That's Pro Football News. That's uh, some friends of ours. And uh, PFF is uh, Pro Fantasy Football, where we uh, get stats and everything for these games. Uh, PFF rated the Brahma's defense second overall behind, believe it or not, the Stallions defense. And then the Memphis defense was was right there as well. So great opening weekend. Uh, you know, we had those crazy hijinks in the fourth quarter with the spitting on the players, the flagrant foul. Uh, you know, our old line did work. Uh, it wasn't, I think they gave up one sack uh, in the game. So they did what they needed to do. We got 75 yards rushing. That puts us there at the top two or three of the league in rushing. Uh, and then the penalties. We didn't have, we had some penalties, but we didn't have any penalties that absolutely just killed or demolished us. Um, real quick, before we get out of here, the attendance numbers were not as impressive. In fact, uh, Arlington led the way with uh, attendance over the weekend. The bullpen was there. Look up our YouTube shorts. We posted stuff from tailgate and from the game and clips and things like that. Uh, Arlington had 14,153. Uh, San Antonio came in second with 13,134. And then there was a pretty significant drop down to Mint, uh, Michigan at 9,400 and Houston at the 9,100. So, uh, you know, those numbers are going to go up, especially with the exciting football we're getting every weekend now. The, the Every game was awesome. There was not a game that uh, was a board to watch or that sucked. So everybody's going to keep coming back for more. We're going to see those numbers go through the roof.
Um, we're going to have two episodes this week. This was our recap episode of the Brahma's Victory. Victory Monday, how sweet it is. We're going to do preview uh, for the Saturday game. Pop the graphic up there, producer. Saturday, 12 o'clock. So we got the number two and number three teams facing off. Noon on ESPN, Brahma's Showboats. Later on this week, uh, we're going to do our preview for that. With that, congratulations to the Brahma's. Thank you, Coach Wade Phillips. Thank you, Alex Millett. Thank you, defense. Thank you, offense. Thank you, Chase Garbers, for not listening to Web Up in D.C. And make sure you came out ready to compete. Uh, 75% completion percentage. I got nothing else to say. Three touchdowns. What do you want to know? What does you want to know? The guy's amazing. We're going to end it with that. As always, baby, horns forward. Let's go, Brahmas. Mm-hmm.